hello, everybody. Um, what's up? How you guys doing? Um, I just wanted to do this part before the podcast today because, um, well, I just wanted to address you guys directly. Um, it's a little bit different than what you normally do on the podcast. Um, this week I decided to have a guest on. I'm always trying to up the level for you guys and try and uh, try and you know keep things moving forward. Um, from the very day one, uh, from starting in my bedroom to now, now we're here. Um, and so uh, this week I decided to try and have somebody on and do an do an interview and uh, see how it went. And it, we, I had a really good time, man. Um, I had some of my friends on from the Actor Circle Ensemble. Um, they are starting a new thing called Pick Plays. Um, talking about some social justice stuff, um, talking about some things that need change in our world. Um, and I think it's a really cool concept what they're trying to do, um, trying to entertain people, but then still talk about things that need to be talked about, some important things. Um, so I think it's really cool what they're trying to do. I wanted to try and help promote that, talk to them about, um, about their new venture into this, into this, uh, this area, especially theater, because theater is one just like I talked about about my industry of music and stuff like that, you know, we're kind of at a standstill. I mean, you can't really go to a theater right now, but they found a really cool creative way to bring theater to you. Um, and uh, I thought that was really neat. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, I don't want to take up too much time at the beginning of the podcast here, but uh, we're going to be talking to my friends at, uh, at Actor Circle Ensemble, also known as Ace. Um, and I'll link all their stuff below um anyway you're listening or watching this um yeah uh let's get right to it everybody uh now let's get right to it guys um here we go this is the interview i did with uh richard and sandra who were lovely so um all their information will be below be below as well so uh check them out and uh here we go <laughs> dun, 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 you guys don't have to dance, but I always dance for the intro. Once more. Come on, Richard. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so it's not musical theater then, if you're not dancing. It's just uh, right very serious that. drama theater. Yeah, no, the, the bar is hot. <laughs> All right. Well, um, here we are with Richard and Sandra. How's it going, guys? We're all right. How about you? I'm, I'm doing great. It feels weird saying that twice because obviously we said that before we hit hit uh, record here. But uh, you know, <laughs> and a lot has changed in the last 45 seconds. Yes, so. we heard right. a whole song yeah. um, <laughs> made with just my mouth. We, that was yeah. There was dancing. It was Absolutely. Good. <laughs> you guys have pretty good little setups. You guys are faring all right in this uh, new new world here. I just got a new microphone. It's a, uh, it, it looks like a real microphone too. <laughs> Almost a little like yours. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of like almost a necessity now, you know, like it's almost like something you just kind of got to have. Um, you're the inaugural, sh the inaugural baptizing of it too. Ooh, very nice. As an audiophile, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm nerding out over that. That's very exciting. That's cool. <laughs> um, very cool. So, um, how's your guys' day been so far? Oh, Mine's been good. I mean, I don't have any like great new equipment for my for my laptop, so I'm feeling a little envious, jealous, and shamed. But other than that, it's been great. <laughs> you guys have you have a good background there, though. It looks like you found like the corner of your of your space to be in. I have to say, this is this is completely not intentional at all oh really this is just like this is where i work and it, a friend of mine literally like this if you look at this picture right it looks like it's a mirror to a window that looks out on the chrysler building a friend of mine is yeah, like kind of where are you and i'm like that's from a calendar from like <laughs> 1994 you're like in the heart of the city so, baby uh, that's but it's, it, it's working <laughs> it, it like makes me look like a cosmopolitan whatever. yeah but you guys are very it's real though this like is not it. a fake plant this is actually an organic that's nice living thing, so. that's nice in the I studio i don't have any windows so it's i, I can't I, that plant back there is just it's a fakey from ikea but um you know you do what you gotta that do works too. 
Got to get some green in there somewhere, somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, mine is just a mess. This is my office, but I do have. Okay, I'm sharing this. Ah. These are my first roses that I picked from my garden. Aren't they pretty? Wow. It's like a double rose. Oh my God! Wow. So I brought them in here to cheer me up because it's nice. been a little dismal around oh, here yeah. for a couple of two or three days. Yeah. It has, but I like that today is a day of firsts, Sandra. This is this is really like there are a lot. You're breaking a lot of new ground today, which is very yeah. nice. Yeah. Tell me about it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I want to hear, Richard. Tell me. Well, no, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about your new mic and your new oh, yeah. roses. My roses. True. Yeah. True. A lot I can of sparkle new things. plenty. <laughs> Good. True. I love the assume uh, the position. I've always liked the two tone, <laughs> two toned roses. Those are pretty. That look like a Thank like a two tone. Is that orange and yellow? Is that? Yes, it is. Very nice. This one is two tone, and this one is a, just a yellow rose, but it's like a triple rose. It's really pretty, and it's they amazing. smell good too. Nice, nice. There you have it. Yeah. So, so I think that what we're talking about, as far as what we're doing could not be more timely. How about you, Richard? What do you think? Oh my God. Yeah, it is because it's all interwoven, right? Like all of it, all of it fits together. And, and so it, it's, so, I mean, it's great that ACE is doing this just because it is like these issues of social justice that like they are with us every single day and they're, they're really with us right now. Yeah. Um, in ways that we couldn't have seen coming. So yeah, I mean, it is just amazing to me how it's like, you know, it's not an academic thing. Mm. It's not, you know, it's it's not, um, you know, like like this thing that we talk about in, in you know, quiet rooms and lecture halls, like it's, it's happening right in front of us. Um, yeah. So yeah, like it's a great point, Sandra. It's like, well, here we are. Yeah. And we need to be talking about this. So, yeah, I feel really lucky that we're doing it. Yeah, as I was reading your guys' mission statement, I was like, well, that, that feels like it couldn't have been, couldn't have been more uh, timely. <laughs> I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah, it's, an, it's, I guess, fortunately unfortunate, right? Like, bittersweet, right? Like, the, the things that are, that are going on need to happen, but some of it's kind of painful, I guess, as it happens, you know? Um, sure. Yeah. A absolutely. <laughs> And um, we got the oh, your lights. Oh, well, it, got, it got very yeah. purple in your in your <laughs> studio there, yeah. Renee. Like what? Okay, the, uh, the lights in this place. I've been trying to get them to fix it, but they they, they go out um, every once every thirty minutes. So we should be good for another thirty, and then we'll do the ad. That was version. amazing. It, it went That's from like quiet. yeah, it went from like studio <laughs> to like love lounge in a nanosecond. Um, uh, I want to get some neon in good. here for for when that happens and just flick a switch. <laughs> sure, that, that that takes some getting used to. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean it, it is, and it, it you know it's like it's these things where the the particular one that I'm working on um, revolves around un unionism mm. and sort of how well not sort of like unionism is is dying in, in America as as you know things become more concentrated at the top. And everything that we're dealing with right now, like they all, they're they're just like a bunch of fish hooks. Like mm. they all kind of link together, and and you 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 have to sort of extricate them to get your mind around them. But ultimately, it's like we are we're you know we're we're living in a country that you know the promise what, what it's supposed to be and what it is like the distance between those two things is just is is light years, mm. and and we're we're seeing it manifest. And I mean, on some level, it's, I mean, on some level, it's good, right? We're not standing for this stuff mm -hmm. anymore. And, and we're, we're trying right. to do something about it. Right. Um, but it's painful. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, and, and it's painful that it's like, man, we are, we are no further ahead than we were. Mm. And particularly with, with the unionism issue, like we're so far behind where we once were. Well, um, if you look at the last, um, uh, the three big since i've been alive anyway the three big riots that we've had not only the watts riot mm. but then the rogany king riots and here we are with these riots mm. and they're all similar issues a friend yeah. sent me a picture of malcolm x this morning say and the the saying was um it's not a chip on my shoulder it's your foot on my neck Oof. and I went, yeah, whoa, I you know, know, that's interesting too. So I actually posted it because I thought, wow, that's really, you know, I mean, it, we, we've stood up before. I mean, there have been 
revolutions of type. I mean, we're so ripe for a revolution mm. now. And we've stood up before, but somehow we always backslide. Mm. So I think that the fact that um, that Casey's plays, that that company, your company, is that your company too, Richard? Uh, no, I'm actually, I'm a guest in this house. Oh, okay. So me too. But I, but I, I'm advocating for them because I find I'm so passionately that the issues that they're dealing with are so important. And we as artists, if we're not able to inspire someone or change someone's minds, if you look back through history, this is what's happened. But then we just get lazy Mm -hmm. and get comfortable. Uh, But now it's, I think it's probably more intense than it's ever been because we have so many more people and the disparity is so huge yeah. that, um, yeah. you know, it's really. But what he says when he says perform, inform, and change, yeah. we're missing the change. Mm. You know, that's we need to be able to change this. Definitely feels Absolutely. like we're on the cusp of that now. Well, right? and I think that, yeah. like, you know, our artists have always been on the vanguard of, of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just that, like, the rest of the world, and again, not to, I don't want to sound like an elitist artist, but... You, you just can't get around the fact that it's like artists have always been just on the front line mm. of, of social change. Yeah. It's just that like getting everybody else to kind of catch up and getting everybody else to sort of meet, meet us halfway. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, man, I don't know how to do it. And, and like the only analog and, and I don't even know if it's an analog, but the analog I can really think of is like, you know, like gay rights where, it just became the thing where we just, as a society, we just decided we weren't going to, we just weren't going to sit still for it anymore. And when finally just the majority, it just tipped over into the majority, a majority of people just would not stand for it. It doesn't mean that homophobia is gone on any level, but it does mean that institutionally as a country, it, we just made a decision and that decision was, and and it happened so fast. I mean, the fight got fought for a long time, but in terms of the institutional, acceptance of like gay marriage it happened really fast and it happened because just the bulk of the people just said i i i no, I no, no longer accept the marginalization of this mm-hmm. and and that's what we have to do and, and i really i firmly believe that that it, it did happen for you know the lgbtq community because of art and because of things like you know TV, you know, it's like Will and Grace made it okay, and it mm. made it okay for somebody who yeah. lived in Iowa. Yeah, and so it's, it's a reach like of them, right? That art through the medium of TV is able to reach somebody all the way over there, where they might absolutely. have felt more and, alone. And through yeah. a medium that it, that is not elitist right. and isn't one hundred sixty to seven dollars for a ticket. <laughs> True. True. So it's like I think that's where we have to meet people, and it's not going to fix the problem on any level, but, but it's, you know, it's a start. So I think, I think that what the, what the theater company is doing is just like, that's, that's how it happens, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and it has to be done with excellence and it has to be done in a way that reaches people. Um, and, and it's us as artists just using, using the gifts that we've been given to try to try to get people to think differently. Yeah. So, um, before we go, I mean, we're already deep in it and I love it and I don't want to I don't want to get us too far off track, but I would like to just recap for a sec because I realize we jump right in and this is is what I love about theater. Right. Yes. And and we just keep going. Um, But uh, I would love to go back and maybe talk a little bit about, um, you know, Ace and maybe the pick plays in general and what your guys roles in them are and stuff like that. So we can kind of get a a baseline. You know what I mean? Sure. Sandra, do you want to do you want to go? Well, I think what we're talking about um, with I I think the primary thing that weaves the plays together is an awakening, Hmm. you know, to really, really present issues in a light that people can understand and that affect them. And also what they're doing is attaching not super knowledgeable people in mm. each field as a writer to do i mean as a speaker to do a q and a in the end so it's not just sitting there watching us perform it's nice. also to engage them further yeah. that they put one foot in front of the other and do something about it 
and it's very topical the yeah. the issues like y ours is unionism uh -huh. and then environment i mean what could be yeah. more important than the environment so everybody you think wildly yeah. enough when everything shut down the, the the oceans got bluer and the skies Weird. got clearer i mean <laughs> yeah. it's really yeah. pretty phenomenal there yeah. and um education and youth empowerment I mean, oh, I that's, that. I think, the third one that's doing. I have to tell you something interesting that I didn't know. I was kind of researching unionism and how it started. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a research nut, but I get excited about it. And I didn't really realize that in the industrial, the reason the industrial revolution started was a, aside from the fact that labor was so um, stomped on mm. and had no rights at all. But children, children as young as nine years old oh, yeah. um, were forced to work. And they actually then and kids that were 12 and 13. One of the big things was that they could only work nine hours a day. Can you imagine a nine year old child working nine hours a That's day? Wild. And carrying on full jobs. And then they even had them at 12 years old and 13 years old, and they could work 12 hours a day. Wow. So that was all put to, to bed then, thank heavens. Yeah. But I didn't even realize that this was had been going on. I don't know. I'm my head. Where is my head? I don't know. But I'm learning now. So awesome. that's the important thing. I love thing. that you guys have. So if I understand you right, so there's there's the, the play, right? Um, and then you guys have a Q&A after, right? Yeah, that's exciting. Ours is yeah. Eric Loomis this coming Saturday. Nice. Uh, yeah. And he's a, a professor of history. Um, it was written several books, wrote a book on uh, the last, like not, not the last, but 10 powerful union strikes. Oh, wow. Um, and they're really, the Flint strike, I mean, the yeah. really all the way back. So, so, so you find a an, really knowledgeable guy. Sorry to cut you. So you find an expert in the field of what the play is about, right? And then is that what, is it just to clarify? Yes, that's oh, right. Fantastic. Richard, yeah, it? awesome. Yeah. So it's and the way that it's structured, which I think is so smart, um, is that so it's three each each presentation consists of three 10 minute plays that are written around that that particular oh, nice. issue of social justice. Yeah. Which I think is great because anybody can sit through 10 minutes of anything. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It puts right. And it puts this great urgency on it, right? It's you, you have 10 minutes to get whatever, however you've chosen to frame up this conflict, yeah. you got 10 minutes to get it out there. So, so it, it puts a great sort of drive on things. And so it's, you see all three of these 10 minute plays back to back. And then there is, um, as Sandra was saying, this, this really well-respected expert in that field of social justice who talks and then and then you know I believe there's a Q and A piece of it. So I think what's great about it is that it's it's served up in this very palatable fashion. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have to take your medicine. Everybody, <laughs> come on and sit through this three hour thing yeah. that's going to make you want to wish you were any place else. <laughs> so true. Yeah. yeah, it's like a really nice bite sized, right. well put together, right, um, moderated piece of theater yeah. and then sort of the uh, i mean i guess the icing on the cake i guess you could look at it that way is then you get somebody who really knows what he is he or she is talking right. about the expert who yeah. really gets to then yeah. look at it t take this thing that we've been looking at through a dramatic lens sure. and then he sort of serves it up in a more analytic mm -hmm. for through a more analytic lens so that it's like you come out of this thing and it's like wow i was entertained right. and also like became educated yeah and I know there, there's something that feels very sort of propulsive about it. It feels very engaged and it, it, it's just not like, you know, I, it's like the crappy thing about where we're at now is that we can't all sit in a room and be together and experience this right. thing called theater. Yeah. But the, the cool thing about this is that this, this sort of digital zoom platform that we're all on, it's open to everybody. Yeah. And so it becomes this very much true. more egalitarian thing where like, no, it's not really us and them. Mm -hmm. Like we are all kind of in this space together, right. mm -hmm. experiencing this thing. So I, I think I really like. I, kudos, really kudos to Casey and Vic for for coming up with this. Mm -hmm. And and the the other thing that I really love about what they've done is that these plays are all have to be written towards the framework of Zoom. Mm. So it's not like there's a lot of readings going on of, of pieces of theater, but they're not written for this format. Right. And so you're having to really make a lot of sort of 
imagination leaps mm. because it's like, well, this guy is in his kitchen, but I'm supposed to pretend that he's like in a forest somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. These are written to be Zoom communications. And so the immediacy of it is really great because there's nothing in between what's going on and the viewer. It's like they're experiencing it as the people on in the play are experiencing it. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think it's just really smart and, and really like it, it's a unique way of doing this. And it, it, it makes you have to engage in it. Yeah. What an interesting way to keep that. So but it, but it is a lot. So it is a live event right i'm sure you'll have some sort of recorded version of it but uh yeah but, no it's it's all live like there's yeah. there will be somebody pushing buttons and doing all of the doing things the but yeah stuff. no it, it, it's a it's a live zoom call that, How cool. that attendees can like just log on to they can't they they can't participate sure yeah um although obviously there'll be q a for chat and whatnot yeah. but um but yeah like we're all just kind of like on this on this zoom call how cool um, yeah that's yeah, really cool. yeah i find that really interesting because it's like um, I, one of the things that I do here is obviously I have a studio, but like, I also, um, my day job is I tour with musicians. And so obviously that industry is just gone right now too. So all live stuff is really just going to go away for a while. But I love the innovativeness of this because it kind of, I don't know, it just, it keeps, it keeps people like us who do what we do, like doing what we do, you know? Um, I just, I love the, the ingenuity of like human humanness i don't know we just always fi life finds a way right like or whatever they you know i just think that's really cool and it's cool that you guys kept it as a um as a live thing because that that to me is is the biggest thing with theater is that it's just it's there's energy feeding back and forth although it, it is through a lens at this point um but the fact that you can catch a live version of it is pretty cool i like that and you do feel more personal with all of it too. Oh, yeah. I mean, really, when you when you want to ask questions yeah. or when it's, it's really, I think that's fabulous because people, if they do have any questions pertaining to any of the subjects that are being talked about, they can ask. And you do then you do really do feel like you're on a one on one. So that's kind of neat too. Awesome. Um, okay, so for for idiots like me who have a vague understanding of what unionism is but people who may not completely go oh yeah yeah unionism um can we explain a little bit more about that and talk about uh i don't know i guess cuz that's that's our first one that we're coming in with right for a pick place mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. yeah i don't know if one of you wants to take the lead on that but i'd love to hear more I'm going to give like the layman's version yeah. because I think Sandra has done way more research on it than I have because she is just a better person than I am. But <laughs> I, Write that down. That it's down. being video I'm recorded pace right it now. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, all of life, Richard. It's not that easy. I, I mean, it's Richard not that hard to be a better person. It's true. It's probably true, but it's also not that <laughs> hard to be a better person than me. Um, oh, you just took I, the whole all the air out of it. I know. That's, that's, that's what I it's do. It's all recorded. Don't worry. Um, I'll send you. Your copy, Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think that, like, really, like the 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 really kind of gross overview of it Please. is that we, to Sandra's earlier point, we we are the beneficiaries of the unionism movement in so many ways that we have no idea. Mm -hmm. An eight-hour workday is the result of unionism. Right. Uh, overtime is the result of unionism. Um, you know, like two weeks vacation, family leave, all of those things are because workers got together and there is there is safety and power in numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. Mo most of it happened, you know, around the turn of the century. And there were always, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Sandra, but there was typically an inciting event, right? Kind of like what we're dealing with right now right. is that these, these things don't, I mean, they don't sort of gradually morph. Some terrible thing happens mm -hmm. where people stand up and say, we are not gonna do this anymore. So around the turn of the century, you know, they were working these nine-year-olds for 16 hours a day mm -hmm. in, in horribly unsafe conditions, mm -hmm. like, like life-threateningly unsafe conditions. Yeah. And it wasn't until the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, which I think was 1913, I could be making that up, where there was this terrible fire and the owners of the factory had locked the exit doors because they didn't want people like sneaking out for breaks. Whoa. And hundreds of people that. died in that fire Yikes. and because they couldn't get out. Mm -hmm. And so it was that yeah. that really, you know, I mean, that was a, a huge catalyzing event in the union movement where finally people just stood up and said, right. this will not stand. We cannot have people jumping out of windows 
because the, the exit doors are barred closed because people didn't want them taking breaks. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, the, the really layman's over, overarching sort of top well, line, it's, it's people getting together and saying, okay, yeah. we are going to come together as workers and we're going to lay out some protections right. so that this never happens again. And, and, and it is why, you know, by, by the time we hit the 50s, when America was at its most productive, mm -hmm. And when America was a place where your children could do better than you, mm. it was because of the union movement. Because mm. when America like was was a place where we made things, mm. all of those people who were making things on the GM assembly lines, they had these protections. They and and they were they were generously but appropriately compensated mm -hmm. for what they did. And if they had a grievance, there was a means by which they could get it addressed. Right. There was a mechanism, you know, and so and and so it really, I think, and, and I could, I, please correct me, but I really think it hit its peak in like the 50s and 60s. And if you look at the 50s and 60s, they were sort of like the income inequality mm -hmm. was probably at its lowest at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, now you've got people where like, you know, CEOs are making two, 300 times what their median worker is making. Mm -hmm. wow. And at the height of the union movement, like that just was not so. It was a much more equitable time because we decided as a culture, right. as a society, as a community, we're just not, we're not gonna let people work in unsafe conditions and 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 put commerce ahead of humanity. People. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's gotta be people-centered. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the unions, even like the, our union, uh, Screen Actors Guild, um, they, ha they now have these stunt people in, not now, I mean, it's been a few years now, but, look at the protections that they had and we're still yeah. having people they it's, i don't know if it's the nature of the beast or whatever but people will push as right. far as they yeah. can push until someone goes whoa too far i'm not doing yeah. that so yeah. um that's kind of what i mean it takes that energy and focus and passion to get something done so it takes the union leaders mm. to do that the interestingly enough i think is that um, the, the one that we're doing on Saturday has to do with Amazon mm. and wildly enough, while we were first researching Amazon, they were having the same issues that we're talking about in this piece. Mm. I mean, they still, Amazon is still up in arms and doesn't have fair workplaces. Of course, now we've, with the, with the, um, a coronavirus, right. that's a seconding everything, you know, it just intensifies True. everything. But they're still doing that. And here you've got a guy, I said to, I said to Casey, we should send this to Jeff Bezos. <laughs> here you've got a guy who's a, they're gonna probably be the first trillionaire on the planet. Yeah. That's true, that's, oh, yeah. I heard oh, that yeah. last week, who Same. is still yeah. um, uh, not, he's paying a big deal of paying his workers like 15 bucks an hour. Yeah. How does that work? The, yeah. the, you can't, the rich and the, the richer and the poor, the, the disparity, like you said, is so wide and people are angry. Yeah. And that's that's really what causes revolutions, I think, you know, mm. that absolutely. Yeah. And, and can you imagine, can you because because can you imagine what would happen if Amazon shut down? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially right, right now, like right? If, yeah. if every employee yeah. of especially Amazon now. said, I'm walking out and not doing this anymore, yeah. like things would change pretty quickly because to Bezos's credit, he created this thing that is now indispensable, Absolutely. right? Like True. Amazon is the pandemic proof business, right? right. Nothing's yeah. going to shut down. The stocks down actually went, can you believe this? The stocks actually went up, up. So everybody took a dip, right? But they're actually yeah. above where they were before everything happened at this point, which I mean, makes Absolutely. perfect sense, right? You so can't like, buy anything anywhere Bezos else. Bezos is worth more today than he was at the beginning of March. Yeah. I mean, talk about people so, like, like a, like some people always get give people crap of like you know the guy who bought all the hand sanitizer right and was going to sell it on Amazon for a, for an upsale right which obviously that's terrible but when you really think about people like profiting off of the pandemic I mean who's made more than Jeff Bezos you know absolutely and the reality is it's like I don't I don't begrudge that the guy built a better mousetrap yeah like he, exactly he did yeah. you can't get around that you can't take away from him yeah. the fact that he he cracked the case right <laughs> the reality the is that that thing mm -hmm. like you 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 want to see panic in the streets mm. if am if everybody who worked for amazon said see ya right. we're out 
right? right yeah. Right. And and then all of a sudden, and that that's what happened when when unions were at their their peak. Mm -hmm. And even what I would say is that in recent memory, like LAUSD struck, and that wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. And and they they, I mean, I'm sure they didn't get everything they wanted, but I was just going to say, what did yeah. they get? They 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 got what I would say is they they got it a reasonable number of their concessions. Mm. You know, I'm sure they didn't get everything and I'm sure they didn't give everything, but they got a reasonable number. And, and I would say that like public education is probably the last really strong bastion of unionism because yeah. again, it's like, we got to teach our kids. <laughs> like it is an indispensable yeah. thing. Yeah. But every, everything else, you know, it's like it, it, it wouldn't, you, the, the death of unionism is, it's not going to stop. I don't think it's going to stop. No, you know? I don't think that people will stop. Um, I mean, this is my my random person's two cents, but I don't think people will stop fighting for their for their own rights, right? I mean, like that's you'd hope. I mean, it's like it's the nature of being a, a human being, right? It's like we're, and also like I think if nothing else, like the coronavirus thing, at least what it's taught me is like. I used to be one of those people who was like, I don't know if I really like people. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like I, you know, I felt like I was a week behind everyone's schedule as far as mentally losing my mind indoors. It was like, I'm already kind of solitary as it is, right? So I'm like a week behind. And then I finally realized, I'm like, dude, man, but I, I, I do. I miss people. I miss being around people. And like, it, at least this whole thing, one of the things that really hit home for me is just how much we need each other. Like, and like, I think at the heart of what you guys are talking about is that, right? Like people needing people and people looking out for each other. And I don't know. I don't think that could ever go away. You'd hope it wouldn't. Um, yeah. Well, one of the things that seems to happen when we have any great seeming catastrophe mm -hmm. is that people do rally around right. the next day. The people were out this morning in Long Beach and trying to clean up and, mm. and no matter who they were. I mean, I did see a lot of that, which was really good. Yeah. People help people. You know, our earthquakes, the same thing. Everybody yeah. was open. If you had water, someone was coming in and, you know, that, that there's something about that, that people do rally together in the midst of a seeming catastrophe. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and I think something that's, that, that I, I really respond to about the three plays that we're doing mm -hmm. is that they, they all do treat that in that they, yes, they are absolutely centered around, you know, unionism, that that's, that's the, the issue of social justice that we're attacking. But ultimately, I think all three of them at their core, they're, it's human drama, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's human conflict. And it is, it is people fighting for their viewpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I really like is that they're served up in very different ways, all three plays, you know, the, the way that that message is, is um, articulated is, pretty different in all three of them. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, yeah, I mean, it comes down to, you know, how, how, how far are you willing to go? And ultimately, it, 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 it's about human beings sort of and how we're interacting with each other. And, and I think that that's the really tricky part of it is that nothing is black or white, like yeah. it's all gray. And everybody's just trying to deal with like, how am I navigating this gray? I don't know what yeah. to do. Yeah, that's a good you know? point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I think we take it take for granted, like you know, those people after the after Triangle Shirtwaist, like that was not an easy fight. And I'm yeah. sure there were people who were like, I, I don't know, I'm scared. I, I'm scared to go against the man, right? You yeah. know, just like people at Amazon. I'm sure there are people who are like, I I have three kids. At to least feed it's and a I job right now. You know, I mean, cannot yeah. rock this boat. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's a courageous thing, and it doesn't come. E none of this comes easily. No. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to to know that it it's not. And especially in the current political climate, it's like none of oh. this is easy. Yeah, it feels fringe, right? It's like you're you're on like, but any, any change kind of comes. I, I don't know. I, I'm feeling you on that. Like I feel like it's it, it comes from from the edges, right? Like, and then eventually you you meet somewhere in the middle. But like you said, everybody has a different perspective and look on it. And I think one of the biggest things is keeping keeping the ability to converse about it back and forth. And I think that art especially is one of the ways that we do that right and like the theater and like all these different things that people are coming out with like like i, I saw this thing the other day where it was like uh it had to do with coronavirus less with what's going on now as far as the uh protests but uh they were talking about like uh as you turn on your next netflix episode or as you read your next book or listen to your next uh podcast or music know that in your hour of need you turn to art 
And I was like, wow, that's, I mean, it's, and it's true. I had an old theater teacher back in the day when I was in college, and um, he even said, he's like, he, he always felt lesser than in his family because he was, he was the theater teacher, and, like, his brothers were, his brothers and his dad were both doctors. So he was, he always felt like, oh, well, I'm just the theater kid, you know, and these guys are the doctors. And he said he came down to breakfast one day, and it, you, ironically, he had his doctorate, but it was in theater. So it was like, he he's just as learned as them, but just in a different way, right? But he always had this complex about it. And finally, like, they were getting, they were just messing around with him one day. And he just kind of turned to them. He's like, honestly, like, I I might only make art. But he's like, if, if I was dying on the table and you told me there was going to be no more theater or no more art or no more, like, creations in the world, it's just automata. He's like, I would rather let you, d let me die on the table. Like, what am I coming back for? You know, so as much as it's, it's. It's interesting. It's like we we need art to like get move progress forward and things like that. And it's I don't know. I don't think people give it a lot of credit. Like I think I think people well, are feeling it now. Especially in the United States, people don't give it a lot yeah. of credit. I mean, we we don't even have a, a national endowment for the arts. Right. You know, the one thing that saves people, like you're saying, Renee, the one thing that saves people when they're really going in the toilet mm. is mm. to be inspired somehow in some way with art yeah with the, the painting or music or uh television or films yeah. you know what i mean um so i i think that it's really it's not like that in europe in europe artists are much better respected mm -hmm. um probably the rest of the world too but i've spent a bit of time in in europe and it's really they, they really appreciate it and they subsidize it we don't do that here yeah so i mean i i think that that Casey's on the right track. I don't know we'll ever do it with this particular administration because he, they minim, he minim, anyway, I don't want to get that. But uh, fine, there's no rules here. <laughs> <laughs> there's no rules here, but you know, it is being recorded, so whatever. <laughs> I know, forget it. <laughs> but, He's in our laptop. But I do agree with you completely, Renee, that uh, yeah, if that happened, that would be, I would be the one that would say, yeah, make me next. I'm not staying around. Yeah, totally. Well, that's the thing is that, and and again, it, it, is, it is, I have to say, it is amazing how, how anything kind of gets done in this country because, again, institutionally, we don't place a premium on it. Right. You know, it's like in, in Europe, particularly in like Scandinavian countries where they, though, like, though they are all highly subsidized. And it's, it's not because somebody at the top said, I hereby decree that art is subsidized. It's because they, as a culture, have decided that mm. they want to put a premium on it and they will pay higher taxes because they want to, mm -hmm. because it's And they respect it. Mm. Absolutely. They have a respect for it and they, val they understand the value of it. Mm -hmm. As Americans, we, I think we do understand the value of it, but, but not in any institutional way. Like, mm. a, 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 you know, again, especially with where we're headed, where we are at politically, you know, it's like, there's there's no institutional value placed on it, and and you can only hope that you know God willing things will change, right. and with those changes again it's sort of like you know if you're moving in a line it just has to go like that a little bit to end up right, right over here yeah yeah and so like we just have to hope that we're able to do that because I think a lot of things again it is also interconnected, mm. um, and and I also you know I think that people don't realize in the moment how how critical to just just how critical to a culture art is i don't think people realize that art actually changes the political landscape oh yeah mm -hmm. they don't yeah. realize that it changes the financial landscape like it, it changes all of this stuff you know during the depression the wpa and like people you know the government was subsidizing people to paint murals in post offices and it sounds so dumb but it wasn't it actually helped people get through yeah no, so it's so it's uh, you know I don't think people realize when we're inside of it that it is it it's not a it's not a it's not icing on the cake mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the cake it's it it is a part of who we are yeah. um yeah. so you know anything we can do to help that cause like we got to do interesting do do you, what would I maybe this is kind of this is a general question but like I. I Feel, I understand a lot of what you're saying, and I actually agree with it as far as like subsidizing uh, art. Obviously, I'm in a studio. Um, you know, <laughs> this, you can't see it, but off screen, I got like a bunch of guitars. I mean, I'm an artist. I make, you know, as well. But I'm just, 
I feel like, because we touched a little bit on schools, right? And like in teaching and stuff like that. And I feel like those two things, like subsidizing art and also school, like we don't take care of our teachers enough. I mean, and the oh, first thing to go sure. in school programs is, is, is the art class or the music class or whatever it is. And um, I don't know. I, I mean, those are the first thoughts that came to mind when I was thinking about what could be done. But I mean, like, you, you know, I just kind of an open you question. Have, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt you. I was done. Yeah. Oh, you do have um, things like YOLA. Mm -hmm. YOLA is the youth organization, oh, youth orchestra of Los Angeles. Mm. And Dudamel, uh, Gustavo Dudamel, started that. And so there are some movements like that. It's, it is kind of a movement. And the kids are amazing. Mm. And they there are people who will donate the instruments oh, that's great. for the children because they realize just how integral to a well-rounded human being art is right. yeah. so um that's really impressive and there's some others that are like that um, um there's an there are after school programs that uh are pretty impactful too mm. it's just that you have to raise money just right. like we're trying to raise money here yeah uh you have to raise money it's not it's not given it's not allowed i'm not not that it's not allowed it's not even in the budget yeah. so to speak yeah. so um that's why everybody's out there trying to raise money for these different issues hmm. well that's the thing is that like we america has just decided that if if art is going to be subsidized it's going to be subsidized by rich people yeah and that's it's not much we're not happening. gonna yeah we're not gonna build any 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 institutional governmental infrastructure to support it and it, it's you know it's that that bogus sort of trickle down theory mm. which has been proved to not work mm. but why but is that why is that i mean it's not a rhetorical question i'm curious do you have an answer for that i i think it's like i think it's rich people's way of hiding behind the fact that we're we're a capitalistic society and we're a market economy mm which is a lame excuse, but that, that's the, the excuse is we're a market economy, let the market unfold the way it's going to. Mm -hmm. And if we are a market that doesn't value art, then art isn't valued. Yeah. If you, wanna, if you wanna like to open up YOLA, open market. up YOLA. Yeah. Who's to say that we're, we're a market that doesn't value art? It's somebody up, it's some suit someplace that is saying that, that there are other things that are more valuable than art. I love that you called them a suit. It's, that was that was probably my favorite part of the podcast so far. Some suit. Some but it, suit. It is. I love it, but it it's is, true. It is it's so true. Suit and it's, it, it's, I, I yeah. mean, my, and again, like I'm not, a, I'm not a political scientist, yeah. but it's like, yeah, it's the person at the top. Yeah. yeah. And if and and if we you know if we elect that person and we elect enough senators mm. who align behind that person, then they are going to tell us what we value, mm. because they're representing the people who voted for them. And if enough of those people don't value it, then it's not going to have value. So, so it's up to us in in these particular situations where we can do little by little by little. Hopefully, it mushrooms. Hopefully, Casey will write a full length play. Mm. <laughs> Well, but ultimately, and, and Renee and, can do the music. Yeah, there, Done. Yeah, I'll do the score. Absolutely. There you go. But truly, it's like it. It. it uh, unfortunately, it's my belief. Like, you got to vote. Oh yeah. You got to vote. Yeah. You know, you because gotta ultimately, vote. it's like you got to vote. But look all, at the issues with that now. Right. Mm -hmm. But but what I would say is that all all five of the issues that are that are being addressed by this project, mm -hmm. like. They're all in the platform. They're they're they all have found their way into into you know again not to get political but too late. Yes, like they're too. all on the Democratic platform, right? Mm -hmm. Environment. Mm. Day one, day one, sure. you you would see that all of a sudden we're paying attention to environmental issues and not backing off on forty years worth of regulation. Mm. Yeah, but so, he so did. Yeah. Right. So it's not it's not going to solve it. But again, it's going to take, we're moving in this terrible direction and it's just going to reorient the direction. Right. And yeah. it all ultimately comes down to who, who are we putting in these positions of right. power? Like ultimately it's like, yes, we are a democracy and we are seeing how that can be so deeply undermined if oh, the wrong decision gosh. gets made. Right. But all of these so issues of social justice, like mm. they can, they can change, but we, we, we have to be the democracy that we are. Yeah. 
in Absolutely. order to make that happen. Yeah, you have to show up. Well, you got to get rid of the electoral part of it, college. Yeah. Excuse me. That's oh, my God. You <laughs> have to. Absolutely. <laughs> we have to. We have to. Yeah. But again, it's a whole like, other way, Renee. Oh, no, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But all of these things, like yeah. all these things that we're talking about, like they are, they're completely, they're, they're doable, right? Yeah. They're doable if, if you, if, again, look at, like, look at California, California, which has a Democratic governor and a Democratic Senate and a Democratic Assembly. Yeah. So all of this stuff just happens. It just happens. The other side will fight, but ultimately it's right. like, I'm sorry, we're in charge. Right. And that's another so thing with the, the it yeah. has to be the people in charge who, who are furthering your agenda. Yeah. And all of a sudden that's, that's why we have ACA and right. that's why gay marriage got voted in yeah. because yeah. because it was a democratic president and democratic senate and democratic house. Yeah, I feel like that's so. like something that also I feel like people are pretty jarred about when it comes to I mean I feel like this virus just like exposed a lot of things that like people didn't realize were already a thing. Um which one of them is just like how like you said Richard like how different it is state by state. And like like that is one of the beautiful things about our country in, in one way where it's like you know it, and i think it should be like that i mean we are like the united states but it's like so we have like one thing that helps manage all the little things but i mean we are each our own little thing and if you don't like it in one spot maybe you can go to another spot that has a little bit better and you know and obviously hopefully like you said the trajectory i, I really like that example because it's i think people want a change overnight and rarely if ever does that happen i mean that's that's really hard to do um, but I think changing the trajectory of where we're going is is really more the goal, right? Because I mean, it's, there's always going to be work to be done, but like to keep moving in a direction that's worthy of moving towards, I think is is I don't know more important. And let and hopefully that it stays there that right. we don't backslide again. Yeah. I mean, everything that we're talking about, where where we did get to some level where things were really pretty mellow yeah. and people were really respected and whatnot. And then all of a sudden there's this huge slide back for some reason. Mm. So, I mean, the, the other two things I wanted to say that are part of this, um, uh, the, the pick plays is that they're getting into discrimination, which of course is right out there yeah. in front of your face right now. Oh yeah. And also, huh? was, Oh yeah. I was just, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and healthcare, two huge issues yeah. that are still out there happening right now as we speak. And we're no better off than we were when we started this ages ago, yeah. except we don't have segregated buses and terrible things like that. But a lot of other things are pretty intense. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and I think that, again, it's like, you, you're not going to change the macro overnight, but you know, knowledge is power, right? Yeah. So something like pick plays in our, in, you know, our small way, you know, I'm, I feel pretty certain that there are a lot of people out there who don't realize that there is an eight hour work day and a 40 hour work week because of unions. Yeah. I think they just assumed that like somebody at some point decided it was a cool idea and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And they don't realize that people bled for that. So I think in our small way, if we can use what we have to sort of educate even just a teeny little bit, that then, you know, on some level our, our, our work here is done. Mm -hmm. And when, and you know, and when you see, so that the next time somebody who's like scrolling through their feed and they see, oh wait, Amazon's trying to unionize. Oh, that's what that means. Right. Like you've kind of done your job. It doesn't job. make it a dirty word yeah. anymore. It makes you, you understand what, I feel like that that's such a huge thing there, Richard, where you're saying like, you're getting people closer to the reality of the history of what that is and not what maybe somebody else wants you to think that means i don't know if that makes sense no t it totally does and and i think that the way we're doing it where it's not a history lesson and it's not a lecture right. but it's like and this is how this actually impacts actual human yeah. people mm -hmm. yeah. in a in a bite-sized 10 minute play yeah. i think it's i don't know i think i think some good can be done yeah you know i i think a really cool i mean this is kind of a different we're a little bit but you know this is how my add brain works but um another one that kind of like i feel like does that really well? It's like you, ever, you guys watch Black Mirror? You ever watch that? Great yes. show. I don't know, Sandra. Have you, 
It's on Netflix. Just, just anyways. Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Mirror. Black Mirror. Oh, Black Mirror. Oh, I have the discs. Yeah. Okay, I'll watch yeah. it. Watch them. I think you. I think you would love them. They are also like watch them in a good mood because they'll put you in a bad yeah, mood. Yeah. If you watch them in a, a bad dark. mood, it'll maybe, get really maybe dark. it's it's post <laughs> post coronavirus. Yeah, days. when you can go yeah. out in the sun a little more and get some vitamin D. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like it's it's one of those where I. It's kind of like you said, bite sized, right? Like each up. Funny enough, when I first watched Black Mirror, I didn't realize it was episodic. So I watched the first, like I watched the first episode where like the British Prime Minister has to, whatever, spoiler alert, has to do some stuff with a pig, and I'm like, how do you top that? Like where? <laughs> I got to, I got to the end of that show. I was like, how, where do you, where do you go with that? Because that they're meant to be episodic. And then I watched the next one. I'm like, oh, each one is its own thing, and they talk about their own issues socially about whatever's going on in the world. And I think that's really, it's a good point. It's like making it bite-sized and palatable almost for like this new, like people have such less attention span now, right? Like, Oh my gosh. That's absolutely. So putting it in like some sort of like 10 minute thing, but then also like because you're doing three, you're getting three different perspectives on the same issue. You're getting like a three dimension, literally three, three dimensional look at something. And then you're talking, you're okay. Now let's have an open conversation. Like you said, with the, you know, like a chat with somebody who actually knows about this stuff and is able to like, you know, go definitively, this is the date when this happened or yada, yada, yada. Like that's, that's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think like the analogy of Black Mirror is interesting because it does, Black Mirror isn't gonna stop technology from encroaching on our lives, but what right. it is gonna do, it's gonna make somebody like me think like when I get my next iPhone upgrade, it will make me think twice in terms of if they're like, oh, because yeah. um, it's not enough to give anything away, but. Yeah. Most of them have something to do with how technology is really like encroaching on our lives and starting Ooh, to make spooky. decisions for us. It's really, yeah. it's creepy because it literally feels like that's not that far in the future. Right. Like that's, that's maybe two steps ahead, two not years 10. from yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. It, so it, it's not like, Ooh, it will never be that way. It's literally like, Oh my God, that car is doing things that like the next version of my car will probably be able to do. Yeah. Um, Some Tesla's probably already do it. It does make you. It does make you think twice. I mean, yeah. as a consumer, it does. So yeah. it's like, no, it's not. It's not going to stop smartphones from getting smarter. Right. But it is going to make you, as a consumer, I think, if right. you're paying attention, sort of go, oh, let me think about that. Yeah. Which is hopefully what the pick plays are going to do. Is that it's just going to it's just going to get in there, so that you don't you either think twice or you don't take something for granted. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a good point. I I agree with you. Yeah. I yeah. You're you're not being bombarded, but it's just enough to whet your appetite, uh, to really pay attention and do something more or yeah. investigate more. When when I first got Casey's script when he was first talking about it, because like I said, I'm a researcher, so I I wanted to see what the ten best union films were from different points of view yeah. and yeah. uh i watched a ton of them i mean all the like on the waterfront and how green was my valley and then i was, i mean the, all the way up like norma ray and and um silkwood and there's a lot of them and and it really powered people at that point they paid attention mm. absolutely and in theory i mean my as a theater director like my my first question is always how is the audience different when they leave the theater than when they came mm -hmm. in like my, my job is to just make sure mm -hmm. that i'm interpreting this so that on some level you are a changed human being and different material lends itself to that differently i mean sometimes literally sometimes it's just like hug your wife man just make sure to hug your wife and you might not have realized that when mm -hmm. you walked in but by the time you walk out you hug her a little closer and sometimes it's like, oh, I have to look at my entire world differently. Yeah. So, you know, what's what's nice about these is that it is like there there's a very to me, there's like it's a very specific mandate, right? Yeah. In that whoever is watching this, and again, we're not like clearly, I don't know that a lot of people are gonna be tuning into this thing who are anti union, right? <laughs> like I, I I would imagine probably most of the people are, you know, they're they're probably might might be most of the way there. But in terms of like how we're presenting it to them and how we are serving up in a way that is very about human conflict, mm -hmm. that I think is different. And, and again, it's like, I think that the mandate is, yes, have people put some space in their brains for this issue of social justice that we just don't really ever think about. Mm -hmm. um, so like if we're doing our job, hopefully we're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like it. So th- this first one that you guys are doing is on unionism, and then um, what are the ones after that? Do you guys know, or is that something I should pull up on a list? That's here? what I was saying. The following week is environmental. Okay. Um, so that should really be a very interesting piece. Oh, yeah. And um, education and youth empowerment, apropos of what we were talking yeah, about absolutely. earlier. Um, discrimination, that's a biggie. And uh, what's the, what's the uh, last, last one? is health. Healthcare, yes. Yeah. Healthcare. Nice. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. A lot of And each big one issues. has a, a person attached who's a, a maven in that field, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, that's cool. Another great word. Suits and maven. Maven's a good one, though. I haven't, that's like, yeah, that's such is, a great word. She is chock full of them. <laughs> oh, gosh, you guys. Maven is good, though. I haven't heard that in a while, but Maven's it's like, good. it's no, such it's a specific, and it really, word. like, the, you get a picture in your mind of, and it's true, though. Um, gosh, that's such an interesting concept. I'm excited. Um, when is it, when is it going up? When's this, fir- well, the first one's going up? Saturday. This Saturday. This coming Saturday. Okay. Uh, five o'clock, um, uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Cool. Saturday. What's the date on Saturday so we don't get confused? June, June 6th. June 6th. Okay. Cause... June 6th. Tune in. Great. June 6th. Yeah, because I'm we're recording this right now on Monday. This goes up on Wednesday, and then I was just, you know, people's dates get screwed up. But June 6th, we're going to tune in. How do people find How do people find you? I think they can go to, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, do you know the website off the top of your head, Sandra? Because I'm, like, scanning trying to find it. No. Uh, let me shoot um ah, of all things that we're not like i know no. and i'm looking at the poster i'm like there's got to be you way to there's got I'm to be way it, i'm gonna make it really um, real easy oh for people who are viewing it i'll just do one of these real quick and it, it looks really well, dumb right now pick, but it, it's actually post, not I'll under it pick there. plays i did look at that today so actors circle ensemble there you, but go. you know what we're gonna have to shoot why do we not know it's that no... yeah it's like Oh, oh you, well, yeah. If, if you go to if you go to actorscircleensemble dot com, yeah, that and will that take is you a, to. That's, that's like the cover page where then there's a click there. You can click to register. Great. Yeah, that's okay. it. Actors Circle Ensemble all together dot com. Awesome, and I'll I'll put a link in the bio for you guys. So just in case, Great. on wherever I put things, I, I do have the link. But so actorscircleensemble dot com to find the pick plays, and these are the ten minute plays with experts talking about the yes. different social justice issues. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. This sounds really cool. It's re-sparking my uh, my old theater, you know, part of my, my brain that I used to do back in the day. So that's this is fun. I'm excited Good. to catch it on on Saturday. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be be great. And the, and I mean the the actors are just like they're just super talented. The plays are really well put together. Like it, it's just it's just a solid group of people. Um, and, and again, like I really, I just, I have to hand it to Casey and Vic because they, I, I just know the amount of work that they've done to put this together is, is just astronomical. Yeah. And, um, and they're very fast. It actually originated, um, with the actor's studio. All of us are part of the actor's studio, oh, wow. East coast and West coast. Yeah. And, and that's how it originated. And, and we were put together because it was a project that the studio was doing, not about this at all, just, and it was kind of a random um, blessing that the five of us initially in our, our first piece there got put together and, and it just, and Casey and Vic had a couple of different ideas and they they just decided on the spur of them like boom oh we decided we're going to do da 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 and then we got pages and i'm going this is pretty good you know i mean that's fun. he really is a good writer and he's a fast writer yeah and he's not married to any his words he wants his points of view but not to his words so yeah. I mean, there it's he's it was really exciting, and then it evolved from there, and here we are. And Rich, are you directing? Or are you an actor? I'm directing. I'm directing uh, the second piece. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, that's yes. so. Are you part of uh, the actors' circle? I'm not. I actually just Casey and I sort of found each other just in the world. Um, so, uh, so, and I'm, I just feel very, very lucky. Yeah, um, I do too. I do too. I mean, I because we're doing what really our art is about, you know, to move people and inspire and, yeah, make them feel better, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah, or just, just make them smarter than they were when they logged on, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, well, I have to say, 
it's really cool like talking to people who are very passionate about what they do i don't know like that's refreshing now i don't know i don't know what it is but <laughs> lately it's just been a lot of ho-hum and i feel like it's cool to see two people really fired up and doing something i guess productive in a time that could feel not not very productive you know it's like this feels like moving forward and like doing things and I don't know. I appreciate you guys. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before I try and wrap it up or anything? I don't want to cut you short because we. I, oh, no time just go to, just appreciate go to, you. Yeah, just go to Acker Circle Ensemble and register. It's all free and it's all easy. Oh, yeah, please do that, and then we can do a follow up maybe sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a blast. This is super fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Actor Circle Ensemble. I will link everything below. I will link it anywhere. I have things going this will be a podcast video thing on youtube and stuff too um Great. i will get your guys's info and put it down below as well and thanks for coming on i appreciate oh, it yeah, this was super yeah. fun feel free so. to, to contact us either facebook or twitter or whatever it is with yeah. your points of view when you see it that would be exciting wouldn't it richard 100 percent. that would be great we'd yeah, love that so sandra curry at aol not, not at aol sorry <laughs> oh now you're gonna get emails <laughs> so, uh, facebook <laughs> sandra curry or, or www.sandra curry and what's yours richard i'm um, uh, richard israel director.com and you can just contact me through my website that's see. That's what I should have said too. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have said it that you did. So uh, like, I'm just taking your com. It's easy. <laughs> Sandra Sorry Curry. Wow, it's great. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. No Renee, worries. thank you for giving us this opportunity. I think we yeah. really appreciate. Yeah. it. Yeah. We really do appreciate. Likewise, it. thanks for coming yeah. on. This was super fun, and I will talk to you guys soon. And I will see you Saturday. What what happens, man? I'm excited. Yeah, we'll see you yeah, Saturday. Yeah, get in evening. touch with us. We want to hear more too. All right. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Once more. <laughs> 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 <laughs>